don't post the same as everyone else. Don't post all the same shit everyone else is doing. The template content will not work. Relying on ads will not work. Relying on cold DMs will not work. Social media deserves the same level of attention that your clients get from you. Oh, if you hate it, don't do it. No. Mm -hmm. Fucking grow up. It's like a dentist saying that they hate looking at teeth. In this video, we are going to tell you what to do if you're an online coach and you just don't like social media. Hey guys, we're Dan and Mike from Business and Banter and we're here to help you with your online fitness business in any way we can. And the emphasis on online there is relevant for today's video because we're going to talk about what to do if you're an online coach who really doesn't like social media um, or hates social media. Uh, is the term that I've heard used before to describe social media. Uh, I'm going to talk you through what you should do if that's the case. And if you want more information like this, members group. Go in the members group, £99 a month. We've remembered to do a CTA. More in-depth content like this relevant to you and your business. And we do keep some secrets in there that we don't share on YouTube. So definitely do. worth getting in there for £99 a month. No contracts, no upfront payments. Um, so, you're not going to find anything better than that out there. What do we get? So you get um, the weekly group call on a Monday with us. Turn up to live. It's always better to turn up to live. Live. Ask us questions, usually presentation led. From time to time, we get guests in there. And we've also got Jake and Jake that are going to be doing the, the coaching clinic. Coaching clinic. If you want to be a better coach, you want to upskill and learn from two of the best coaches in the game, um, you go. then, then so join the group. Two videos a week. Two two live videos a week. All the back catalogue. It's all there. All the library. So what's that? that £12.50 a video? £12.50 a video. Not too bad. All, all, all the back, back catalogue. Hmm. That's all there. Loads of videos, loads of resources. Forum in there to chat. 99 quid, no contract. Get involved. If it gets you one client, you're, you're you in business. Profit. Profit so. on that. So today we're going to talk about what to do if you hate social media, and this grinds my gears. I'm not going to lie to you, and this may get a little bit ranty, and we're going to provide the solutions at the end, obviously. But one of the things that I despise is when someone is an online coach and they say they just don't like social media. And I want to scream at them and go, well, give up then, because you are an online coach and you've got a free platform in which to market yourself. And having the mindset and attitude that you hate social media is not going to help you in any way, shape or form. So have your little pity party, have your little moan about it, and then watch this video because we're going to start to show you how you can get around that mindset and what you can do instead. So if you don't like social media, the response should be, oh, oh, okay, so let's knock up some flyers. Um, yeah. Let's, um, let's go and deliver thousands of flyers in the local area. Let's put an ad in the paper that nobody reads. Um, let's put flyers in all local businesses, coffee shops, gyms, etc. cetera. Um, let's put on some local events um, for gym members, uh, nutrition seminars. Let's market yourself that way then. Oh, that sounds like a lot. I don't want to do that either. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, exactly. So what's the option then? Yeah. And actually what you're saying about that is I hate work. Um, really, a bit harsh like again. But it is like a PT saying, I hate going to the gym. Well, if you like going to the gym, you're not going to be able to train people there. It's like a dentist saying that they hate looking at teeth. It's like a doctor saying they hate hospitals. It's like, come on. Like, it, it's part of the job. It is the job. Online coaching. A good chunk of your time needs to be spent on, spent on social media. Now, I appreciate that sometimes people hate social media because they don't know what they're doing wrong. They don't know what to do. Uh, they just copy everyone else. And they feel like social media can become almost like a bit of a, a cesspool of just negativity and shit and all this sort of stuff. And my response to that is, well, be the change that you want to see then. Don't post the same as everyone else. Don't post all the same shit everyone else is doing. Think about what you would want to see more of on Instagram and start posting that. Have that mindset to it. But like I said, it is like a doctor saying that they hate hospitals. Prostitute saying she hates dick. I mean, that's a bit extreme, but very true. You know, exactly that. Um, they probably do at some point as well, actually, yeah, after a while. It's a bit imagine, much, isn't it? Yeah. Oh, not again. Imagine oh, a while, it's just no. a bit too much, isn't it? Um, <clears throat> but point being is that it's a huge part of your job. And, and I think that what holds a lot of coaches back is that mindset to it. And it's always the coaches that don't have that many clients or don't have a social media presence that say that. The coaches that do have a social media presence actually end up enjoying it and liking it. And the reason that they end, the reason that they grow and the reason they do so well out of it is because they embrace that side of it. They embrace enjoying it. They embrace making videos that they want to make. And I appreciate at the start of your journey, it can seem like an absolute minefield and it can be scary and it can be a bit intimidating. But I, I need to stress this, that if you want to make this a career and a job for you in the future, you will have to get over that. You will have to get over it. And one of the ways you can get over it is there's two ways. One is the graded exposure, which is that you slowly start posting a bit more, putting yourself out there. The other one is that you just get thrown in at the deep end and you just go, hell, hail Mary and just fuck it and just straight away go all in. They're the two options you've got. 
the option of never posting on social media is not there. Whoever is out there telling you you don't need to post on social media and it's okay if you hate it and you don't need to post that much on it and you can just do this and you can get away with this and you can just Bollocks. spend 30 seconds a day on it is bullshit. It's usually people that have spent hours, months, years on social media to build up an audience and then say that. Well, yeah, but they did all that first. Then they can only spend 30 seconds a day on it. Of course they can. Yeah, because they know how to do it now. You don't have that privilege. The reason why you probably don't like social media is because you haven't spent enough time doing it, I would mm -hmm. say. Because what most coaches' exposure to social media is consumption. They make two or three posts a week, most of it garbage, because um, they don't know... Yeah, motivational, they, motivational quote with a picture. Yeah, they, they don't know what niche they're trying to target. They don't know what personal branding is. They don't really know how to create different forms of content, and they're making the same content as other coaches to fit in with other coaches. So that's what your exposure is. So you're spending, like, top the amount of time that you actually spend creating content and, and posting it. The post takes, what, a minute, if obviously you've you've, you've done the caption in your drafts or whatever, or um, in, a, in your notes. Add up that time and go, is it longer than a bread bin? Uh, no, it's not a quote. Um, is, it, is it longer than, like, realistically, is it longer than an hour? Let's just say, is it longer than an hour? Because I think if you're making two or three posts a week and two of them are pictures or, like, Canva images, you're not spending more than an hour. Are you expecting to get good at social media in an hour? Think about a normal job. You go and, get, you go and work 40 hours a week in a normal job, and after months, you'll become proficient at your job, right? Months, years. Yet you're, you're, you're trying to develop a skill, which it is a skill, mm -hmm. and a large part of the job in an hour a week or two hours a week. Do more of it. We were shit when we first started. And we're not perfect now. Like, we don't pay loads of attention to the hooks that we use and the calls mm -hmm. to actions. We always fucking forget them. Like, we're not perfect, but we show up. And we show up consistently over time so you get better and better and better and better and is posting on social media our favorite thing in the world no we'd be lying if we said it's our favorite thing we love it we can't wait to do it you know if we weren't coaches or mentors or whatever you want to term us if we weren't in the online space we probably wouldn't be posting as much right that's that's true but we are in the online space so we are posting so because what is the alternative the alternative is, that's like being an in-person, so you're an online coach, the clue is in the name, online coach. So that's like being an in-person PT and not being in the gym. Mm -hmm. That's literally what that is. You're at home. I'm not going, picking oh, any clients. I'm not picking in. any clients. <laughs> yeah, you won't because you're not in the gym. So if you're an online coach that isn't posting online, you're not online, are you? You're a coach that has an Instagram profile expecting people to fucking miraculously find it and go, oh my God, this must be the coach for me because he posted a fucking meme four days ago. Like, what are you expecting? What are you expecting? Literally that and... and it's the same, you know, these are the coaches as well that get people come to them in the gym and go, oh, I want to be able to lose all this belly fat in two weeks before my holiday. And you kind of like scoff at them and be like, oh, come on, mate, I'm really expectations. And like, with all due respect, a lot of you do the same thing with social media. You're like, oh, you want to be, have all these clients just roll in. And it's like, yeah, but you, you're clueless when it comes to online, like presence and social media and what you're doing isn't going to get you where you want to be. And like, so that, I guess so that you don't put yourself in the same position as that. And we don't scoff at you. We just go, okay, cool, right. Well, these are the things you need to know. These are the basics you need to know. And you just go and do this work. And a lot of coaches go, oh, it seems a bit much. <laughs> yeah, it does. Yeah, it's a bit much. Much in the same way that a doctor, like to go to fucking become a doctor, has to go through years and years of medical school and training and to earn, you know, a pretty decent wage that you could surpass in the online space, by the way, if you put your mind to it, you're not prepared to do seven months of fucking online posting. Never mind seven years, like they have to do seven years training. And it's just that entitlement of like that you are expected to be good at social media because you've got an Instagram account. No, every single person you see that's got a large following that does really well, they learned those skills. I bet if you watch some of the people on Instagram that you love their videos, you're like, oh my God, they're a great influencer. Or they got loads of followers. Or, I love the way they do their content. But if you watch the first video they ever put out, you'd be like, oh my God, that was awful. Yeah, it will be. Of course it will be. Our first ever YouTube video, absolute garbage looking back now. But it was also one of my favorites though. When I look back at it now. Which Our last enough. YouTube video was garbage as well. Yeah, so the last one was garbage. Not much improvement. No improvement much. Um, but it was almost for me, the reason I liked watching back was because it was the start of it. It was the start of us going, we're going to do this. We're going to give it a go. We're going to put ourselves out there and put our personalities out there and not give a shit 
what people think and what people say. You have to get over that step. That's the biggest step to get over. And a lot of people struggle with social media because they don't want to put themselves out there. They don't, they're for fear of judgment, for fear of what people might say. It's people- fucking soft is what it is, right? There's this notion that you have to love everything that you do. Oh, if you hate it, don't do it. No, fucking mm-hmm. grow up. Like in a normal job, you do not skip through the doors of a normal job and go, God, I love every day. When I, when I was in the RAF, I was having to fix fucking planes at 4 a.m. in the morning, like 12 hour shifts, 6, 6 um, p.m. till 6 a.m. The other shift was 6 a.m. till 6 p.m., 12 hours out in the fucking freezing cold, snow, rain, wind, hail, having to sign things off that if that aircraft went down, you would go to jail for because it would be classed as uh, manslaughter. Pressure on that, getting paid two grand a month, right? Did I love that job? No. Did I love elements of that job? Yeah, wicked. Love being around the lads, love the, you know, the banter, the humour, the, the all that stuff, right? But there's elements of it that I didn't like. So if you don't like social media, that's okay. You don't have to love it. You don't have to, but you do have to do it just the same way as if my boss told me to go out and do something, service a jet at 3 a.m. I do have to go and do it. Mm-hmm. I don't have to go, oh, fucking thanks for that. Oh, I love. I absolutely love that. Can't wait. Yeah. Be, be buzzing to do that all day, all evening. I'd rather, I definitely wouldn't rather be in the crew room playing pool, like, but I'll go and do it. So you don't have to love social media but you do have to do it. You do have to see it as part of your job. So if it's just the part of your job that you don't really like, okay, it, you don't really like it, but but still do it. There's this whole notion as well that becoming an online coach, you're going to love every single day and every single part of your job and running your own business that you're going to love every part of it. You're not. If, if anything, I, I would argue that there's parts of the job that you probably dislike more than when you're in a normal job. Um, and the argument for that is that I'm more prepared to do that because it's for me and my future. I'm more prepared to eat shit and do the, do the graft and put the hard work in that maybe I don't enjoy. Maybe I don't love the workload and love, but I know why I'm doing it and I can see the future and I can see why I'm doing that, right? It's the same with online coaching and social media. Social media, you need to invest so much time and effort into because it's for your future. It's for you being a better coach to be able to help more people, to give a shit about more people in the long term. Do you have to love every minute of your day? No, you don't. Like Mike said, we'd be lying if we sat here and go, oh, we love every single day that I go to work. Some days I feel like the workload is too much and I am exhausted at the end of each day. But that doesn't stop me approaching it with the same mentality of, well, I'm going to give this person 100% of my time and effort and energy because they deserve it just as much as anyone else does. And social media deserves the same level of attention that your clients get from you. Because that's where you need to put so much time and energy to then get more clients, to help more people. You can care about people and care about your job and simultaneously not like parts of it. That's not a problem. That's not an issue. I'm not sitting here saying that you need to, like Mike said, oh, I can't wait to film this video today and talk about this stuff. And like, oh my God. No, you sometimes turn up and go, well, I need to say this because people need to hear it. I'm not going to enjoy talking about this to you guys because it feels a bit like I'm just having a go. I'm just being ranty and that sort of stuff. Of course, I'd rather be like, hey guys, earn a million pounds in just a month. Uh, But it's, it's a lie. It's a lie. This is the reality. This is what we're talking about. And this is why you need to hear this because when you get past that element of, I'm supposed to love social media, well, said who? I'm supposed to love the content I create. Says who? I would argue, yeah, you should love your content you create, right? But again, it's all just something you've told yourself. I should love social media. Well, why should you? Why should you love every single part of what you do? And I think it's really important that you go, why don't I love social media? Most of the time, it's because people aren't saying what they truly think and feel. Most of the time. It's because of that. I argue with with coaches all the time and they say, oh, I'm just, just really not motivated to post today. I've not really got anything good to say. I'm like, well, you don't know who you want to work with well mm. enough then. Because if you do, we never run out of things to say. I can, every single day, there's something I can talk about. Every single day that you need to hear, that I need to tell you. And if you're not in a position where you're like, well, I've got this, I need to say on social media today. My argument to that is, well, you don't know your niche well enough. Absolutely. It's... Um it's one of the things that you are literally going to have to get over. And if you can't get over it, you're not going to be an online coach. And it, it sounds brutal. And other mentors will say, oh, um, you don't have to. Automate you don't have it, to build, outsource it. Automate it, yeah. templates, here's this, here's that. Because they're trying to take cash out of you. I'm saying if you can't, 
post and make posts and make content and show up on social from media, your own brain. I'm yeah. not going to take money off you. Yeah. Never, never mind create something so I can rinse you as well. Uh, you don't want to post on social media, so do you know what? I'm going to make you some templated content that you can go and post and appease the issues that you have with social media. It won't work. Forget about that. It won't work, but I'll sell it to you anyway. I would rather go, if you can't show up online and you don't think you're going to be able to show up online and you're not going to be able to build relationships with people and you're not going to speak to people in your DMs and you're not going to move people to an email list and you're not going to consistently email, don't bother replying to work with us mm -hmm. because you're not going to make it. The templated content will not work. Relying on ads will not work. Relying on cold DMs will not work. Not over the long term. It might work for three months. Okay, cool. Well done. That isn't a business. That's you've done something for three months. Talk to me in five, six, ten years' time when you've built the, the, the business in the right, right foundations. And what does that look like? It looks like posting on fucking social media because that is the marketing platform you have available to you, social media. So unless, like I say, you want to go and do flyers and this and that and the other, right, and do local style marketing, which is more of a ball ache than free Instagram. And more expensive. And more expensive. <laughs> then you're going to get have to get okay. Start simple. Like Dan said, if you want to graduate your your um, entry, you want to start with written content first because it feels easier and you graduate to voiceover stuff so it's not your face on camera and it's a little bit easier and you can do different takes. Do a voiceover. That's fine. And gradually get better at it and you will get better at it just the same way as your clients get better at squatting. The first time they come into the gym, the balance is off, they're leaning too far forwards, the one leg's stronger than the other, one of their knees turns in. Like, what, are they like that a year later? They shouldn't be. Why shouldn't they be? Because they've probably squatted every week for the last year. If they squatted once and then come back a year later and go, oh, should be squatting 200 kilos by now. But you've squatted once. It's the same equivalent. So you're going to have to show up and just get gradually better and accept that you might suck in the beginning, accept that you might not like it, accept that you might never like it. But that's okay. It's okay to not like it. But you still got to do it. It doesn't change the fact. You still have to do it. So get better at it. And I would argue that that changes as you go through. You, you might start off not liking it. It might be six months, 12 months. But once you start finding your style, your rhythm, the way that you want to say things, the way that you want to put things across, it does become something that you do enjoy a little bit more. You do enjoy your style of posting, whether it is that you ruffle feathers, whether it is that you're a little bit more blunt to the point, whether it is that you're happy and a bit more caring or sensitive, whatever it is, right? But ultimately, you need to look at this as a transition, like Mike said there, between squatting with just the barbell and being all over the place like Bambi on ice to 100 kilo squat, I would say that you need to think about your journey through social media as well. And 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 a part of this as well is that the, some, something that I get all the time is I'm just not very good on video. I just don't like being in front of the camera. Well, you're going to have to get used to that because to be an authority in this industry, to put your voice across properly and to build connections with an audience, you need to do that. All the best people are doing it. I don't know many online coaches that hide behind camera images and written posts. They just don't do it right? It creates a better bond with people. The best coaches out there do it. And, and for me, it shows a level of authority and confidence within yourself to do that and put yourself out there that puts you higher up than other people. I think there are people out there trying to sell you the dream by telling you you don't need to do this stuff and that you can hide behind written stuff and you don't need to talk on camera and that you don't need to be on Instagram more than 30 seconds a day. They're selling you a dream that does not exist. I can promise you that. So if you want to learn how to do more social media and do it better, know your niche, build your personal brand, get consistent, know how to improve your copy, learn better hooks. If you want to do all of that, it's in the members group. It's £99 a month. Um, it's no contract. Sign up, have a little look. More of this stuff. It's even better than this. Um, loads better than this. Come join us. We're going to loads more depth. Actually, loads more actionable advice that you can do. Plus, we've got people in there that you can ask questions of and you can actually have your stuff checked over and looked at, believe it or not. There you go. So, stay tuned for the next one. Um, bye. See you later.